Hey, good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, I thought I'd throw that first clip in there, which I got just a few uh, seconds ago. So I could show you what is making all that background noise. And those are the Koki frogs. And they're pretty elusive when you walk out there. They usually uh, pipe down as soon as you get close to them. I just happened to see those two and tried to get a few seconds of video so people could see what they looked like. Uh, the one that I was able to get that kind of close up on, it was only about the size of a nickel. They're pretty small creatures, but they have a powerful set of lungs as you can hear. And that brings me into this evening's video. And I'm doing a, a side by side comparison of this Red Odo and this Power Queen over here. They are both 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've been using them every single day and for the past few days I have used them in absolutely identical situations to see how each of them performs. And I'm going to give you those results. Um, they're both on very simple standalone systems. They're each independent. The only difference in uh, the systems is over here on the Power Queen side. That's being fed by 300 watts of power, solar coming in. And then on the Red Odo, uh, it's just got a 200 watt solar coming in. Got two 100 watt panels coming in here, three 100 watt panels coming into this one. And I've showed you a few other experiments, but like I said, for the past couple days, I've run them identically. Uh, zero difference whatsoever and got some pretty uh, neat little results. The only difference uh, that I might say is they are being run with different inverters. This is that old PSW Con. They have since changed their name to... I'll have to look it up. It's some kind of weird... Uh, name that I, I've seen it on Amazon a little bit still, but it's not by that name anymore. And then this other one is uh, the Alpha 1500 watt. Both of them 1500 watt pure sine wave inverters. They were what have were being used, uh, and then the batteries themselves. So other than the inverters being different on each system, they are both. Uh, the same size but for the experiment that i'm going to show you what has happened over the past few days the discharge is what i duplicated on both of these uh, for the past few days i did the exact same discharge on the red odo the exact same discharge on the power queen and like i said other than the difference in the amount of solar coming in to charge them back up is really the only significant difference. And because they're both on Victron charge controllers I can go back and show you exactly uh, what happened. And the Redodo is on uh, this is the Redodo one. I've named it Wall Charger. For those of you that don't know, you can go in and change the name of your charge controller. And wow, now I'm getting rain and frogs. And the rain usually makes the frogs get louder. So I might have to shout for this or even just take a pause. I'll see what happens here for a second. But anyway, what I've done for the past few days is have run the reliable little Mr. Coffee 600 watt five cup coffee maker. It's not a huge coffee maker and it doesn't have the huge draw that some of them do, which is why I went with this one particular. So for the past few days, what I've done is I've uh, every morning made two pots with this on one system and then switched over and did two pots on the other system and right now as you can see of course zero watts coming in because it's dark outside it's about oh 
nine o'clock at night. That Redoto sitting at 16.69. It's fully charged. It got up to a full charge today and stayed in float for a while and I will show you that as well. And here's the the log for the past few days. Uh, it's been taking 160 watt hours, 170 watt hours, 160 watt hours, and 170 watt hours. So this charge controller app is so specific I can see that on the first pot of coffee on this particular day it took 160 watt hours uh, or excuse me that's total let me say that again so on this first day during the experiment uh, two pots of coffee and this thing pulls consistently 660 to 670 watts when it runs it doesn't run that long to make a pot uh, a few minutes for uh, each cycle and then it just turns off but instead of being the 600 watts that it's rated to it draws a little bit more 660 670 uh, pretty much on the button every time so back to the log for two pots of coffee this day 160 watt hours the next day 170 watt hours uh, i forgot what happened that day uh, it still got to full charge i don't think i used the redodo on that day so it was just a fully charged battery all day anyway and that's why it went into uh, absorption and float right off the bat as soon as the first light hit it and anyway, on the third and fourth day, 160 watt hours, 170 watt hours. So very, very consistent on what it is uh, taking to get that back up to full. So I can say that for two pots of coffee, 160, 170 watt hours is what I drew off that Red Odo. And now this is the log for the Power Queen. Of course, zero watts coming in. It's nighttime. That battery is at 13.31. I'm just drawing a small load off of it right now. It was a fully charged battery as well today, but I'm I'm running the light in here and and the inverter that is on uh, over there is what is uh, powering up the shop out here for a few things right now and if I go to the history okay I can see on that one day where the Redoto did nothing I ran all four pots of coffee right there 330 watt hours but on the other days uh, 170 watt hours is what it drew off the power queen identical to what it draws off the uh, Redoto so the discharge rates were just so identical. This day was the, about the lowest I saw. It only took 150 watt hours. And then over here, 170. And there, 150. So, very, very identical draws on the battery, uh, on both batteries. And the other thing that I found that was interesting was. Uh, while it was being discharged at that 660, 670 watts, uh, how did the battery hold up? What did it drop down to under those heavy, uh, heavy draws, even though they were short? And the lowest uh, the Power Queen dropped was, here's a 12.74, 12.78, 1276, 12.75. So, you know it didn't even pull it down that hard and that was just momentarily but the uh, Victron recorded it and then of course when it was done brewing uh, it bounced right back up and as you can see I mean I was able to get up to full charge every day anyway and then this is the Redodo uh, log and it was pulling it down 
12.8, so so close. Everything was identical. Uh, it bounced back just the same. I saw very, very little difference in uh, either battery. So, uh, as you know, if you've been following these little experiments I've been doing, I did get a voltage spike in this uh, a few weeks ago now, I believe it's been. And what I did was I uh, changed the charging parameters on the Victron controller and I, I'm just charging it up to 13.8 and then down to 13.5 as a float. It never really gets down to 13.5 after it gets up to a full charge. As you can see, I mean, I just showed you a minute ago that thing is sitting at rest at 13.69 right now. It'll keep going down lower, uh, not much lower. It'll still be about 13.6 when the first light hits. The Power Queen actually seems to hold the charge just a little bit longer at a higher level. Uh, when I go to bed, that thing will still be at 13.7. So, you know, 13.6 on one, 13.7, they're both fully charged. They're both doing great. So I'm not seeing much of a difference. The other thing I will tell you is that I did change the parameters on that uh, 100 volt 30 amp controller Victron up there. I did change that to 13.8 and 13.5. So they are both being charged up to the same set point and floated at the same. But the same thing, this never really went down to 13.5 and it's not going to tonight either. So just for a short little experiment, it's been kind of fun to see that they both act pretty much identical. Hardly any value changes whatsoever. So I'm hoping you guys can hear me over the, the frogs. Uh, the rain settled down a little bit and they are so happy. Let's see what the temperature is here. It's the right combination for them. About 70, 76 degrees at this time of the evening and wet. And that's what really gets them going. Interesting little fact about those cokey frogs. Uh, as some of you will know, is if it's dry, uh, they don't make too much noise and the other thing at exactly 63 degrees uh, they turn off completely so on nights which we're not getting down to that temperature uh, this time of year uh, except maybe very occasionally but in the winter time when it gets down to 63 degrees at night and I mean at 64 they're still making noise at 63 they stop and it gets silent out there so i always they always let me know when it's 63 degrees so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this little comparison between these two batteries i've been working them every day i know some of you that have bought this one and i know some of you that have bought that one i'm working them both out they're both working quite well no discrepancy that i can even really mention between the two they both work as they're supposed to and except for just those small little numbers difference and you know first thing in the morning before the sun hits the panels this one may be at 13.62 and and that one may be at 13.7 and that's about the biggest discrepancy i've seen other than that they're both fully charged and ready to go they charge up get up fire up the coffee and now I'm just thinking of the next thing I can do. All right. Good evening, everybody. And aloha.